tell us about? In that case, the chat box. I think, I, think I gotta share my role. As general evaluator, you usually tell the role uh, at when you begin the role, but please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Uh, fellow Toastmasters, uh, the purpose of the general evaluator is to evaluate everything that takes place throughout the meeting. During the meeting, I will take notes on everything that happens and doesn't happen. I will evaluate each participant on the meeting program and look for good examples of preparation, organiza organization, delivery, enthusiasm, observation, and performance of duties. At the end of the meeting, I will give my report. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Arturo. That was nice and clear explanation of your role. I appreciate that. And you can go ahead and there we go. Yeah, thank you. Today we have our talk from Miguel and he will be telling us, we have his evaluator is going to be Kim, I believe. Kim, would you tell us what you're looking for to evaluate in Miguel's speech? Absolutely. Um, the title for Miguel's speech today is It's Still Your Set. Um, to introduce uh, Miguel, his fascination with weightlifting and exercises compels him to consistently research training and recovery methods. This also gives him a chance to come across many inspirational stories of people who change their lives and the world around them by using fitness as stepping stones. So today we'll hear about Joe Weider, Weider, who is not as well known today, but is someone who really helped to build and shape the fitness industry. This is Miguel's speech four from the Persuasive Influence Manual. Toastmasters, please give it up for Miguel. Thank you very much. Um, in your list there, it, we're asking you for what you're going to look for to evaluate him. The introduction is for the Toastmaster, but what are you going to do for, uh, as far as the evaluation is concerned? That's the second paragraph that you got today. Do you see that? That, that could be objectives. The objectives. Thank you, thank you. So the objectives here that I have is to select, he's selecting a topic that, um, that he's not already familiar with or that he wishes to learn more about. Uh, his speech is gonna be five to seven minutes. So we're gonna be looking to practice his speech and continue to refine his organization. So pretty much to present his speech at a club meeting, which is what we're doing today. Excellent, thanks so much, Kim, I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, we know about Miguel, we know his dancing side, his real estate side, and now ladies and gentlemen, the visceral side of Miguel and how he got those biceps cooking. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Miguel. Thank you so much, Madam Toastmaster and Kim for the introduction. I know that was kind of a mouthful, but I appreciate that you that we were able to get through it and <laughs> that you took all my notes into consideration. So thank you guys for that. So today I, I did want to cover somebody who I thought was very interesting when I had a chance to research a topic that I wasn't already familiar with, somebody I'd heard a little bit about, but really getting in and diving in to get to know his story. So this gentleman, Joe Weeder, who had just an incredible, incredible life experience himself. Somebody who started from really a bottom position who used his creativity, who used his persistence to one, overcome, his, overcome where he came from, uh, poverty to be able to become an athlete, an accomplished athlete that won competition. He used that same creativity to become a very successful publisher, to make all these magazines and to help spread the word of fitness, the word of bodybuilding. And in his later years, really create a legacy to where he was helping other people who were struggling in publishing. He was able to help other athletes who were struggling making it in the industry and really kind of go back and relive his life and redo the same things that he went through. I just think it's an incredible story. So, and, and Joe Weider grew up in Montreal, Canada, actually. 
he grew up he grew up in the 1930s when we were still in the era of the Great Depression with all of that going on. And even where he was at, he was considered a minority because he was he was a, a Jewish immigrant. So he was he was bullied all the time because he was he was a small kid. He was a skinny kid. And he used to look up to think to people and athletes like Olympians and strongmen and bodybuilders and just thought to himself how much he wished he could do something like that, how much it could change his own life. But because of where he came from, because of his own physical appearance, he wasn't sure if it was possible. But after years and years of being, of being bullied and being picked on and beat up for all these different things, he just decided at one point that these people he looked up to, he's, he decided, I'm going to do what it takes to do that. So he would gather up all the information he could. He would grab magazines, even if he had to fish them out of the trash. He would get any information he could to help his diet, to help his, new, to help his training and his nutrition so he could build himself up. The funny thing was at this time in the 1930s, bodybuilding wasn't a huge sport like it is now. And there wasn't access to gyms. There wasn't access to training equipment. In fact, when he made this decision, he ran all around Montreal trying to find a barbell, trying to find weights, and he couldn't find anything. In fact, many people hadn't even heard of a barbell at that time. What he ended up doing is he went to a train yard to get an axle, to get parts, to get wheels. And he brought all of this junk home to his parents who were, who were not appreciative of it. And they were like, what are you? Are you becoming a mechanic? Are you trying to build something? And he just told his parents, there's no barbells. There's no training equipment. So this is what I'm going to use. And his, par his parents didn't really appreciate it. <laughs> he, would, he would train and he would make time to, to lift in the kitchen of their small apartment in Montreal. And he would have to do it when his mom wasn't there because his mom hated the idea. She wanted nothing to do with it. In fact, his sister would blackmail him and he would have to do extra chores just so we'd get a chance to lift in the kitchen when his mom wasn't there. Now, after this, years passed. He would train, he would train, and he would eat, and he would eat. And he got to the point where he was winning competitions, weightlifting competitions, strongman competitions. And it got to the point where he won so many that he started to become recognized. At this point, he really had a chance to change, change that first part of his life. Like even, even through the poverty, even though there was nothing available, he found a way to make it work. And as he continued to succeed, as he continued to, to win these different competitions, he was being written up in the newspapers and magazines and all these things. And people would actually write to him, wanting to know what kind of training are you doing? How are you winning all these? How did he go from a skinny kid who was getting picked on to somebody who grew and was strong? And because of this, he decided, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start publishing. I'm gonna start going out there and sharing the same information. And his parents didn't quite approve again. <laughs> Uh, so what, but what he did is he decided, you know, this is just something I really feel. He went out, he got a filing cabinet, a desk, a typewriter, and he brought it home. And his parents didn't appreciate that either. He was like, don't worry, I'm not going to take up the kitchen. I'm going to set up my office in the living room. But what he did is he, he started making these magazines, hand making these magazines with a little hand crank press where he drew the illustrations himself. Now they weren't bad, but he was, thank goodness he was a bodybuilder and not an artist. That's all I can say. And he got to the point where he needed to distribute these. He needed to get these out there. And he went to one of the biggest publishers in Montreal at the time, and he tried dropping them off. He said, this is what I've been putting together. I, I get hundreds of letters a week. I think people want to hear this. They said, good for you, bro. So these magazines, these handmade magazines would come in the front and they would go out the back, come in the front, and go out the back until one day the publisher finally decided, I have to meet this young man. I keep seeing these. I don't know what it is that motivates him. And after meeting the publisher, after getting a chance to do all that, he, he got the distribution he needed. And in a few short years, reached a circulation of 50,000 copies every single month that was going out. It started from this hand-pressed magazine. And from there, he went, on to, he went on to build his empire. He went to acquire magazines. He went to find athletes that were up and rising. He was actually the, the main gentleman who came across Arnold Schwarzenegger and paid for his training, paid for his gym to really bring bodybuilding into this new era, into something completely new. 
the thing that fascinates me about Joe Weider is that it was never about what was, made most sense for him. He focused on what is it that I want? How can I do this? And how can I make it possible? And he always found a way to make it happen. And no matter how, how life <laughs> kept him down, he found a way to make it work. He told himself, I'm not done. It's still my set. Madam Toastmaster. Janet, well, that was a wonderful talk that I just gave too. Uh, I was thanking Miguel for the inspiration. And I really appreciate because for me in the past month, I have needed to decide what do I want to do as opposed to what I should do. I thank you for that. I think it's wonderful. And now we'll move on to more of our meeting. We have a, we did have a second speaker listed. Do we have our second speaker now? Yes, we do. Okay. This, the, and I have the evaluation. Excellent. So are you doing the evaluation, Jamia Wells Palmer? Yes, I am. I will be evaluating Sandra Merrill. Excellent. And please tell us what you'll be looking for in the speech. Today, Sandra Merrill will be working from the leadership development pathway. She's working on project number 13, inspire your audience. So get ready, be prepared, open your minds and your hearts to be inspired by this lady today. And the other things we'll be looking for is her time management skills. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Mimi the Motivator. Sandra Merrill has been with Toastmasters for a while and we all know her as the bright and cheerful president and every other, probably every other role that you could imagine. She's my hero for keeping going and always showing up. She's my hero for being the person that if I have a question, she has the answer. And if she doesn't have the answer, she knows how to find it. She's the person who always, always brings us up when we feel like, what are we doing? She may or may not know, but she figures it out. So she thinks on her feet and ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself to be inspired by Sandra Merrill. Thank you so much. Everyone give it up for Sandra Merrill. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I'm glad you talked briefly about having put some thought into what you want to do rather than what you have to do or what you should do lately, because I think that applies to what I want to talk about today. I think when people hear the words Toastmasters Club Officer, they have a visceral reaction of, oh, do I have to? You know who does that? Someone else does that. I know I, when I first joined Toastmasters, I actually had that vision in my head of somebody else does that. Somebody who isn't me, some nonspecific somebody else is the club officer type. So let's just get rid of those words. Let's get rid of the words club officer and start talking about leadership and the leadership opportunities that we have coming up in the upcoming Toastmasters year. I apologize for all of the emails that I am about to send and for the extremely long one that I've already sent. Some of you may not have finished reading it yet because your eyeballs are still bleeding. Trust me, this is all good stuff. I would not lie to you Leadership in Toastmasters is a fun experience. Look at how much Mimi is smiling and Sheila is smiling. And I know you can't tell, but Chinita is also smiling. I can tell because she is our friend. She has a cheerful, gosh, I enjoyed being Sergeant at Arms while I was there. See, I told you it was true. She is smiling. Don't take my word for it. I'm a shady character. I think you should trust your fellow Toastmasters. What I am going to do is invite our three people who have been Toastmaster officers. Oh, get rid of that word, get it out of there. Who have served as volunteers and leadership to give you a one minute or less description of how leadership in Toastmasters has inspired them to take it elsewhere in their life and how it has been a valuable experience. Could we start with Mimi? Because she is the motivator and this is an inspirational speech. Mimi, could you share with us what you have gained from your time as a 
president and vice president of education and Toastmasters. Well, thank you so very much. What I did was I wrote a list of the roles that I have served in leadership. As you know, I serve as VP of Ed now, but I started as VP of PR because it was my easy space. I knew marketing, so I started there. But then I branched on into president. I've also served as area director. I've served in multiple leadership roles. And the reason that I do this is because I see how it keeps stretching and expanding my skills. And it's allowing me to apply these skills into my real world life to my real business, to my real career. So I encourage you, if nothing else, to take on a role that you're not good at so you can learn some new skills that you can go apply in your future career. Thank you. Thanks, Mimi, much appreciated. And that that is a challenge, that is a stretch or a goal of a, a, like a little growth moment to try to take something on that is not your normal forte or that is not your comfort zone. And if I have time at the end, I will address how I have completely avoided the things that are not my comfort zone in any way. But Sheila has been our club secretary for the past year. Sheila, can you share with us a little bit about your experience? Sure. Thank you, Sandy. So, it, you know, it being secretary or being an officer, you, you get to be more involved with your club and, and you get to help um, plan the projects and the little get togethers. And, um, and it really for minimal time commitment, it really doesn't take that much. And, and you also get to go to the um, trainings and you get to listen to everybody else's, um, you know, what they've learned, you know, this didn't work very well for us. So we now we try that. So it's, it's, it's very helpful and it helps you with your leadership skills as well. So I've, I've enjoyed being secretary and again, minimum time commitment. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sheila. Now, some of you don't know this, but at the beginning of the Toastmasters year a while back, she knew was our, Chinita was our sergeant at arms. And the most amazing thing about how this woman jumps in at the last minute, we're already at red. Can you give us 30 seconds, Chinita, on how you enjoyed your experience while you were a sergeant at arms? Mute. You're on mute. I have experience in marketing, so I felt like I could take on that role easily. And hey, it was rewarding. Thanks. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to share with you the biggest thing I have learned in the number of roles that I've taken, not the ones that I've avoided, is leadership involves a lot of delegation which I just did with my five to seven minute speech. Thank you for your time, fellow Toastmasters. Thank you, Sandra. That was inspiring and engaging. And it viscerally involved us with not only your talk, but everyone else you delegated to, to speak within your minutes. She, get, Ladies and gentlemen, she gave away her minutes to inspire you. Let's give her another round of applause for that gift. The next part of our meeting is a fun part of our meeting, and we call that table topics. We are able to learn how to think on our feet and speak up when we are asked a question or asked to talk on a very short topic. Take it away. Who's doing that? That's Sheila's doing what? that today. I, <laughs> that, that would be me. Yeah, I thought Sheila's. Thank you, Madam Dosemaster. <laughs> Take it away, Sheila. Thank you. So, um, my, my, uh, we're going to do a, a modified of, of would you rather? And part one of mine um, is kind of inspired. I, I had to go back to a memorial service for one of my, my relatives back in a small town in the Western or in Nebraska. And so, this is would you rather live? in a, oh, I guess, I, do I call the person first, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, okay. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. Call them and then repeat it. Yeah, okay. Um, would you rather live in a in downtown in a city in the midst of the, you know, the hustle and bustle, or would you rather live in a rural community where you could have chickens and horses and pigs? So I'll call on Art. Art. 
I've heard you speak for a while. I'll call on Art. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Sheila. I would definitely want to live in a city because most of my life I grew up in a small little town. So <laughs> I know what it's like living, a, living in an environment where it's more rural. So one of the reasons that motivated me to move to the Springs was because it's more of a bigger city. And now I have a lot more hobbies now in my life. And it's all within a 15 minute radius, everything that I do, my job and all my other hobbies. And the reason, one of the reasons why I would wanna live in a city is because the opportunities, the opportunities to, um, I get a new hobby and maybe after so many years growing up and running out of things to do being what do I do there's nothing to do now being in a city it's like whoa what can I do now I can try going taking some martial arts class I can do Toastmasters I can go and do improv I can go and go do some hiking or I can go and go to a group workout at a gym. Uh, so there's just a lot more hobbies, more options of what I can do on my free time. And that's probably one of the biggest motivators why I would want to live in a city. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Um, my next one, Mimi, I'll ask you. Would you rather go to Botanic Gardens, a museum, or a zoo? <laughs> Thank you, Madam Tabletop Weeksmaster. That's a good question. That's a hard um, choice. Well, I want to say in Colorado Springs, I have the desire to do a little bit of it all. There's a money museum here in Colorado Springs, and it's on my list. I have this list of places to go in Colorado. I started before I even came here and have added to since I've been here and haven't gone to almost any of them. But the Money Museum is on there. And the second thing is definitely the zoo. I so want to go to the zoo. I almost went to the zoo for some holiday thing that recently happened, but it was a little too cold outside. And cold and stink is not gonna work for me because I don't like cold and I don't like stink. So I'm thinking when it's warmer, which it is starting to get that way, maybe I can go to both maybe even in one day and have a whole field trip. So thank you so very much for that question. I hope I made the time. I don't know, but I'm stopping here. <laughs> thank you, Mimi. And now my next question, um, I'll ask Kim, would you rather go to see a, one of your favorite comedians or one of your favorite musicians, a concert. Thank you, um, Madam Toastmaster. I would rather, and that is a hard question, um, and, and thank you for asking that question. I would rather go to see my favorite musician. Um, unfortunately, both of them well, most of them are already gone. They've already passed, like Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Prince. I would love to go to Las Vegas to see the hologram of Michael Jackson in concert. I've always wanted to do that just to see what the likeness is of the live person and the virtual person. Now that we're into the new era of everything's being virtual, I would love to get that experience. Music brings me a good vibe. So I would love to be in a room full of music where I can't hear anybody or anything and I and, and the vibration would get my heartbeat hump, pumping <laughs> to the beat of the, the drum that, that I'm, I'm dancing to. So if you will, I love, love music. I would love to be able to possibly be in the same room with Janet Jackson, opposed, you know, just to get the feel of her brother, Michael Jackson. They are my inspiration. They are geniuses. I love to be in the room with people that inspire me. So that is another reason why I would love to be at a, music, a musical concert. Thank you for asking that question. And I hope I met my time, but I'm stopping there. 
Oh, so do we have time for one more? How are we doing on time? Madam Deuce Master? Are we one more? Or Definitely we need to... have time for one more. One more? Without further ado. One more. Um, Sandy, I'll pass this one to you. Would you rather go to a symphony, an opera, or a musical? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. When you started with symphony, I thought this is going to be kind of a tough one. And then you added opera and I thought, I don't think I can dress comfortably to go to the opera. So I could just take that one right off my list unless I'm watching it on TV or on my computer. And then you moved on to musical. And I, I would choose the musical. It's hard because all three are music and I'm with Kim. Music ignites the soul and it keeps our brains working too. It, it triggers firing of synapses in our brains. And it's so good for us just as humans to have music in our lives to make us whole humans. But a musical is going to be so much fun because the energy of musicals makes us want to keep singing along to our favorite songs from it when we get home afterwards and whether or not we can dance, maybe to try to do a few of the dance numbers perhaps. And it's, even the sad ones are incredibly upbeat. And I will share with you something about Eric, which is he was raised in theater, which means I can't have a musical on that he can't sing. I mean, he can't sing, but that he doesn't attempt to sing along to. And it keeps our household exceptionally entertaining and motivated. So I'm choosing musical. Thanks, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, Sandy. So if y'all could send me your votes, I'll, I'll recap. Art told us whether he wanted to live in a, it told us he wanted, would rather live in a city. Mimi told us she would rather go to a museum. And then the second would be zoo. And third, Kim told us she would rather go to a, a music, um, see her a, a music, musical concert. And then Sandy, told us she would rather go to a musical. So if you can send me that private, thank you. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Appreciate that. Everybody get your news and your, your vote to Sheila. It'll be on that little list and you choose Sheila to give that secret message to, unless you want everyone to know how you voted. The next portion of our meeting, and one of the things I did not do, and I apologize, but we haven't been doing with the Zoom meetings, typically in a meeting, we will have one minute on the clock between speeches so that we can write down a personal evaluation for that speaker. But we're not doing that in the Zoom meetings, as I understand. So the next portion of our meeting is going to be the evaluation sector and we have a very special treat for you our very detailed and articulate arturo will be our general evaluator let's hear it for and be, do unmute yourself arturo so that we can hear you let's give it up for arturo our general evaluator who will take this portion of the meeting over. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, Madam Toastmaster. So the first part of the evaluation is our evaluators. And our first evaluator is Kim. So she will be evalu evaluating Miguel. So Miss Kim, could you Tell us how Miguel did. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with Miguel, I was uh, definitely impressed with your speech, and I'm pretty sure we all were. Uh, you kept us engaged on every level. For Clarita, Clarity, I give you a five. Everything was easily understood. Um, you seemed like you were born to be a public speaker. So kudos for that. Uh, vocal variety, I loved it. I gave you a five on vocal variety because 
the way that you use your tones, it really captured me. And I felt like I was right there in the room when they were speaking, um, when, when Dr. When Weber was speaking to the publisher. So your tone definitely made me feel like I was in the room. Eye contact, superb. I don't know if you memorized this or if you had a paper by the side of you, but you kept eye contact fully throughout your speech. Kudos for that. Gestures, like I said, very, very well um, with the eye contact and your arm movement gave us a bit of excitement, you know. So uh, audience awareness, like I said, eye contact, a, a five. Comfort level, born to be a stage performer. Congratulations for that. Excuse me. Um, interest. I love the way you ended your speech when you got the, the, the sign that your time was up and you ended it with, I'm not done. It's still my set. So that was very, very amazing. I will get this over to you as soon as possible. The only thing uh, you excelled, definitely you did your research. Um, I loved your facial expressions and your arm movements. The only thing, I, I don't know what I could tell you to work on. It was almost perfect. The only thing that I would say your challenge, like we all will be on stage on foot, if you would like to challenge yourself by standing up next time, that's the only pointer I can give you. But other than that, everything was immaculate. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for, for your report. Our, the second part is our second evaluator. And our second evaluator is Mimi. And she is evaluating Sandy. So Mimi, how did Sandy do? Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. General Evaluator. Sandy did great, of course. But I'm gonna ask you, fellow Toastmasters, on a scale of one to 10, how inspired did you feel by the end of Sandy's speech to consider being an officer? This doesn't commit you or anything like that. And I wanna know how did you feel before the doubts and fears got involved? On a scale of one to 10, drop it in the chat box right now. Now I'm gonna start at the end. The conclusion is what really stood out to me. The conclusion was short, super duper short, but it was strong. It was strong because it mentioned the delegation. It kind of almost had a subliminal call to action in there. And I know time management was something that was important to you. So yes, we may have run out of time, but you were able to wrap it up in a way where it didn't feel like we were left dangling necessarily. So I do appreciate that. What that does tell us, though, is that maybe we have to be more considerate about how much of our introduction is taking up of our speech. I think an introduction is only supposed to be about 10 percent, something of that nature. Your eye contact has improved tremendously. I feel like you're looking dead at me. I feel like I can't look away because she's looking at me. So good job on that. And I really like the delegation demonstration the live delegation demonstration and the recall to it that this is what I just did and this is what you got to do a little bit as a leader is doing some delegation. So I feel like that you gave us a, a broad view of what to expect. You gave us some emotion using the testimonies from the different people. They gave us variety versus just your own point of view. And then back to your conclusion, you gave us almost like the, the dark side of it. Like, I've been avoiding delegation and this is what I'm doing now, which even supported the part of the speech where I said, hey, stepping outside of your comfort zone, basically, and, and taking a role that will allow you to grow and stretch. So I want to thank you for presenting this speech. I want to thank you for inspiring us. And I got, we got sevens through ten, so that means you did a great job. Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you for the visceral feedback, meaning down, down to earth is how I, I assume is the definition of visceral. So our, the next part is the timer. So Shanita, how did we do with our time today? You're muted. Thank you. Time is of the essence. 
and not very visceral today because I have everyone in on time and doing great. So we have Miguel, your speech uh, came out to be seven minutes and three seconds. Sandra, five minutes and 30 seconds. Table topics, um, we had Art at 1.25, one minute and 25 seconds. Mimi, 57 seconds. Kim, one minute and 23 seconds. Sandy, one minute and 29 seconds. And then uh, Kim's evaluation of Miguel was two minutes and 14 seconds. And Mimi's evaluation of Sandy was two minutes and 19 seconds. Thank you, back to you. Thank you, Shanita. And next will be our our counter, and I believe that is Mimi again, I believe. Yes, it is. I did not specifically count ahs and ums, and I had parts of the meeting where I forgot that was my role, but there is one person that sticks out the most, and I would like to give her the crown and the magic wand for the Wizard of Oz, and that is Sheila. Give her a round of applause. And what I just wanna say for all of us is that we just need to take a breath. We need to take a breath, relax, it's okay. We're in a safe space and remind yourself that. Thank you. Thank you, Mimi, thank you. And last but not least is will be our grammarian slash wordmaster, Sandy, how did we do today? As always, we did excellent. I did not write anything down as a grammarian and that no doubt is something I need to work on <laughs> in upcoming meetings and my future as a Toastmaster is I'm listening to you and I'm listening to your content and I'm listening to what's coming out from all of you on a visceral level and I'm not listening to your grammar very well. so. When I am looking at the printed word, I'm exceptionally nitpicky and I need to put that on my ears when I'm listening to my fellow Toastmasters so that I can help you with future presentations. Because sometimes there are people that get really hung up on the verbal grammar. So I will, I will be more helpful in that way in the future, my fellow Toastmasters. Word of the day, everybody used it. If you didn't use it, and I'm giving you credit for it. In my mind, I saw you using it in a sentence that you were already saying, and I thought this rule works there very well. Janet used it multiple times. Art used it. Mimi stuck one more in at the very last minute. Janita, Miguel, Kim, it's a really good word of the day, and I'm really glad that whoever selected it did select it because I had been, once again, using connotation, and I did not have it exactly right in the past. So now that I've seen the definition, I will use it correctly in the future. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Sandy. So I did take some notes here of the overall meeting. Overall, the meeting was great. Very, very good. So I'm gonna go down my list here. Uh, starting with Janet. Janet, incredible. Um, I can learn so much from Janet. One thing I love about Janet is that if uh, at the beginning of any meeting, she's always willing to volunteer to take up a role. So she's, I always love her initiative. And there's so much I can learn from her in Toastmasters. I would say the preparation as a Toastmaster, I would give it maybe like an eight and a half out of 10. Um, I feel that there were some moments where Toastmaster wasn't really sure who, who whose role, who was supposed to have a certain role. Um, eight and a half out of 10 preparation. Transitions were great. I love the transitions as a Toastmaster. And that great catch on the one minute. I did not catch that myself actually until you mentioned it, Janet, about how ever, after every speaker speaks, they should have one minute um, so we can give feedback to, to the speaker. Kim, always great preparation. Um, that's one thing I really like about you. You have every meeting, great preparation. 
Uh, Miguel, I, I like how you created your speech. Your speech was great. I think um, your evaluator gave you such a great evaluation. I, I like how you shared about how you chose to talk about the person you, you talked about and great visualization. I almost, I almost walked, I almost, I visualized everything that you, that you talked about and I felt I was right there. I, it felt like a great experience for me, a great storyteller, I would say. Uh, the one thing I would probably say I would recommend to improve a little bit, it would be pause. I feel you, you're gr such a great speaker that you're so smooth. Sometimes people forget the power of pauses to get people to hang on to your every word that you're saying. <clears throat> but overall, great pace. Sandy, I love your enthusiasm. You always bring a smile when I'm in to me when I'm here with, with Toastmasters. And great engagement. That's one thing I sometimes forget a lot with my when I'm when I when I'm speaking is getting my audience to engage. So I love that. And um, Sheila, great format and the preparation. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's something that not many toast table topics masters do. So I love the format, giving me an option to either go point A or B. And um, and uh, I would say that's overall great, 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 great. So thank you. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Arturo, for your articulate and very complete evaluation as general evaluator. We appreciate that. And now, drumroll, please. I would like for our table topics master to announce the winner. And she's giving out prizes the next time you see her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the winner today is Kim. Thank you Thank very you. much. For that. I have to say, Kim, and I, I liked all of those table topics. You all did as well. But Kim nailed it with seeing the hologram of Michael Jackson. I can never stop watching him dance. And I think that he's going to dance in perpetuity right in front of us. And I think we should all get a ticket to go to Las Vegas right now on Frontier Airlines. It's $45 round trip. Are you guys ready for that? Yes. Are you guys ready for that? Yes. One day, leave in the morning, watch all the shows and fly back that night. Don't even have to stay at a hotel. Let's do it. I know it. I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you all so much for what a splendid meeting. The preparation that you made for our speakers, the ad-libbing we did. I apologize. I had computer problems and I could not lift that schedule. I would have had a 10 or an 11 for preparation if I could have got a hold of that schedule. <laughs> but as it was, I appreciate the eight and a half. That helps me do better the next time. I'm going to return the meeting to our president to close the meeting. Thank you all. Have a spectacular week. I look forward to what you cook up for our next meeting. Thank you. Madam Toastmaster, we need to fill our roles for next week because as Janet said, we are, gosh, you made me hungry, Janet, cooking something up. Now I want to get to my lunch. Please give your Vice President of Education, who is committed to your progress as a Toastmaster and helping you meet your goals. Uh, so she, oh, big, ah, uh, sorry so she can get our meeting for next week planned out and everybody can work on their roles to keep moving along their journey. Thank you, Madam President. So I really have to go fast because I am about to be interviewed for somebody else's show. So here we go. This is what I've already put in. Next week, Janet will be speaking. I will be speaking. Sandra will be general evaluator. Kim, guess what? You're gonna be Toastmaster. Holler at me, I got your back. All right, you'll be timer. Now, the rest of the roles, please feel free to unmute yourself and let me know where I can slide you in. I can evaluate or I'll count. All right. So I'm going to put you in, you said grammarian. Is that what you said? Uh, uh, evaluate or, evaluate. or I'll okay. count. And then Shanita's going grammarian. Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna put you in as an evaluator. Yeah, okay. Um, did I cover everybody that's on the call? Oh, I can do something. Yes, Sheila, thank you. I don't have the screen up. So Sheila, I'm gonna go ahead and put you in as the second evaluator, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so very much, guys. I will see you all next week. I am now logging off. Have a great week. Thank you. Let's see, oh, one person.